Hello. Hello, Elijah McEwen here at Bovine Sex Club. I'm Daryl Fine. Fine. Nice to meet you. And Daryl, 25 years at the Bovine. How crazy is that to think about and look back on? It's totally crazy because most bars last about two or three years, and that's it. People are done with them. They move on to their next favorite watering hole. So I think we were probably realistic and didn't really think about anything more than three or four, maybe five years back then. And who's been some of the some of your favorite acts that you've had come in these doors must be difficult to narrow it down but who've been a few standouts for drinking or for playing both both oh, such <laughs> a loaded question all my friends are oh gonna, yeah sorry all my friends are gonna hate me if i don't <laughs> mention them but uh in terms of people coming down i mean i have a lot of affection for for queens of the stone age and eagles of death metal because you know we have a lot of common friends and you know, when the boys were young, they used to come down with cassette players. Uh, sorry, cassette tapes, if you could imagine. When they started showing up at the bar, there was only recorded CDs as opposed to recordable CDs. But again, my partner Wes at the time was a technical genius. And so on our wall in our sound booth, we had a dad tape player. We had a studio cassette player. So every media that you could do we had a machine for it to play it so people didn't hand you your cd or they didn't hand you their thumb drive like now or they didn't just email you a shit can of music like they can do now they really had to bring in the physical matter to play and so we would play the music of the bands who were stopping through town and sort of become rock and roll cheers for them and then eventually when they became a little bit more famous they were always very gracious and came back and had drinks here as their sort of place to hang out their little clubhouse and so those guys were very good, and you know, in the, you know, back in the day, some forty-one, Billy Talent, Lexus on Fire, Monster Truck, like they all sort of grew up drinking and playing here. You know, we sort of had a relationship with all those Canadian bands, and No Effects and Fat Mike has been famously lovely to the bar and things like that. I mean, there's just there's so many bands to talk about. I have this great story about how when we had planned to have this record company party. I don't know if you folks know, but record companies in the old days actually had influence on things and threw parties here, like Velvet Revolver and U2. I mean, great parties, but everything was a little bit contrived. And then one day we were supposed to have Porno for Pyros here, which is uh, Perry Farrell's sort of between Jane's Addiction versions. He did Porno for Pyros. And we we're going to have this party. It's going to be semi secret. They were going to play, which is like a huge band in a small room. And then all of a sudden, the show's off. And then all of a sudden, it's the day that the show's supposed to be on, so I had booked other bands to play. And so Perry Farrow walks in with the band, and they're dressed like they're supposed to be on stage, oh, nice. which is kind of cool. Nice. Kind of cool, kind of cool. And then uh, in between the second and third bands, they kind of said, what do you think, Daryl? Could we just go play with their equipment? I went talk to the band on stage. Of course, the band's like, take my gear. <laughs> and they got up and literally tuned for... I don't know. Less than five minutes. But tuned by tuning themselves. Yeah. They weren't talking to the sound man. At this at this this point it's a it's a ghetto concert. Like there's no there's no planning. <laughs> They're not using their own instruments. And they whipped off four Porno for Pyro songs and in between each song they did a Jane's Addiction hit. Wow. Like totally off the cuff. And at that point people did have those little tiny phones that we all used to have when we were younger. Because <laughs> yeah. you're way too young. And all of a sudden, everybody starts texting, and within 20 minutes, we went from having 30 people here to having 180 people here and 50 people outside that couldn't get in because Jane's Addiction was essentially playing at the Bovine, which is a 160 cap room, and wow. you know they were a massive band at the time. Well, Porno for Pride was very equally as massive at that time. And, uh, it was really interesting. And now this is the Bovine Sex Club. Now to anyone outside that doesn't really know the area that's going to seem a little odd to them just when they hear that so where'd that name come from well we used to have this this large dance club in the uh, middle of the 80s and at that dance club we made this shirt i think my friend jennifer johnson made the shirt it was a cartoon cow on the shirt with a big thought bubble just like you see cartoons you know like high and lois and superman and it said uh 23 Hop, which was the name of this club, and I did that club with the three boys that uh, opened this club when I was the junior partner and they were my mentor, but it said 23 Hop is not the Bovine Sex Club. 
bovine, meaning cow in Latin. Of course. And so he had this cartoon cow saying 23 Hop wasn't the bovine sex club. And all of a sudden, you know, people love the shirt. It was hilarious, the shirt. And we sold a bunch of shirts. Everyone was wearing them all over town. And Wesley, who was sort of my mentor and the technical genius behind how, how this place was built, this, you know, 23, 25 years ago, he kind of stored that in his little gray matter. And then we were opening this place talking about what we're going to call it he just said we're going to call it bovine sex club right from the t-shirt from the old place and it means nothing (laughs) because there are no cows here and there's no sex here most of the time (laughs) but we're not a sex club per se where couples come and display their wares oh exactly yeah not like that of course sex clubs are legal in canada now so you know, people do call here all the time. It's pretty funny. They're like, hello, <laughs> is this the Bovine Sex Club? This is during the day, folks. And I'm like, yes, it's the Bovine. Well, how much is it to get in? Do I need to bring the girl? Can I buy women? Is there sex? I'm like, listen, go to the website. Look at what we do. We're a rock and roll club. We're a punk club. We're a metal club. We do live music here. And you're more than welcome to come. Cover charge tonight for the band is $10. Oh, $10 to get in for sex. I'm like, no, 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 for music. <laughs> Anyway, those people that call come down. I'm sure they're pretty unexcited to be here. <laughs> well, that's great. And 25 years of the bovine. What's next in the future for the place here? Oh, 25 years later? <laughs> wow. I'm going to be gracious and say survival. <laughs> it's really hard to be in a big city and have a punk and metal club on a major retail street where, you know, it costs tens of thousands of dollars to be here every month. So... We survived by taking risks and booking bigger bands, and you know we built a tiki bar on the roof so that we can, so that we can have uh, an extra part of revenue in the summer to prepare us for the cold winters and things like that. That's sort of what's next. I wish I could say there's some monumental thing like franchises of the bovine around <laughs> the world. So wherever you are in the world, and you want a bovine, and you have a few hundred thousand dollars. You can't do it for thirty-five thousand dollars anymore. I mean, there's inflation. You have a few hundred thousand dollars, and you know where I can get some junk. We can open a bar. <laughs> well, you heard the man here, Daryl Fine, at the Bovine Sax Club. Thanks for joining us. Oh, Bye between commercials. Nice to meet you. Have yourselves a lovely evening.